Hiroshima. The guy is heading your way. Copy that. We're on it. Answered Kirishima, staring up between the tall brick walls of buildings either side of the alleyway. He could hear the sound of his breath against his ears. His eyes darted across the sky above. Dispatch from the commission described the culprit exactly how he remembered him, except for the quirk he displayed upon his escape. Something changed over the Christmas holiday, and Kirishima felt he had more stake in this to figure out what that was. Suddenly, a shadow whipped past his vision, momentarily blocking the sky before disappearing into the next building above. Thumper! Move now! He called, his fingers on his earpiece. He felt his legs move on their own, racing towards the street in hopes that he could catch up to you. The teal-haired man hopped over the edge of the last apartment building on the block, grabbing onto the rusty metallic bars of the fire escape and hopping between each floor until he landed onto the concrete pavement, feet and legs holding steadfast. His breath drew heavy, every inhale of oxygen burning his lungs. Using his newfound quirk, this soon was a risk, along with his fitness feeling the burn in his muscles and joints. Hello, stranger, he heard causing a light-hearted chuckle to escape his tired breath. <laughs> well, what do you know? He breathed, turning his eye towards you standing by the street. Sweet pea, so good to see you. <laughs> Shut up, Seek, you spat, striding towards the man with a heavy step reaching out for the collar of his shirt. <laughs> Word travels fast. As soon as you took a fist of his clothes, Seek grabbed a hold of you as fast as the eye could see, taking swing after swing. You matched his speed, grabbing hold of his limbs only to be pushed away every time. You pushed your palms into his chest, feeling the rippling vibrations of your quirk course through them until a shockwave pulsed into his torso. Seek's body flew towards the apartment building, crashing with a smack into the brick. You eyed his body, limp and held steadfast against the crumbling brick behind him. <sighs> Surrender, you uttered, only hearing a chuckle in response. <laughs> you, you're a funny one, <laughs> replied Seek, his snake-like eyes staring back at you with a flash of gold. You're more of a pearl, huh? A sudden wave and boom smashed into the wall beside him, his hair whipping past his face before you flew towards him kicking in midair. He merely stepped aside, dodging and grabbing hold of your leg, taking advantage of your momentum to slam you into the wall. The force of the swing shattered through your back before you felt his hand push your chest into the wall the other with its thumb on your forehead. A warm glow captured your vision, watching that same glyph appear before you. Thumper! Your eyes glanced quickly beside you, finding Kirishima's figure appear from the corner, his body slowing in motion. Maybe next time we'll have a better rematch, Pearl. <laughs> spoke Seek with a warm smile, until a bright light blinded you, and your ears drowned within a heavy resounding boom that rivaled your quirk. Kirishima stopped in his tracks,
blinded by that golden light. Eyes pricked and unable to focus on the fleeting shadow of Seek escaping down the street. He stumbled ahead, hoping that his sight would return until... <laughs> Crying? He squinted his eyes to rid himself of the blinding sensation, to find your clothes all in a heap on the pavement, sheltering you. Now a child, amongst its folds crying tears into the fabric and hiding your face away. It hurts. Everything hurts. Kirishima froze, unable to decide what to do. Seek's fleeting figure disappeared down the street, leaving him with little to no time to catch up to him, whether by speed or time. He stared down at your weeping little frame, clutching onto your clothes and huddled inside, trying to find some comfort. Hey, spoke Kirishima, kneeling down towards you and laying his large hand gently on your head. You'll be alright. Just hold on for a bit while I call for help, okay? He spotted your crying eyes peer up at him before he gave his signature toothy grin, immediately finding you shun yourself away into your clothes, still upset. Kirishima turned towards the shattered and broken wall of the apartment block, connecting that the last blow that you suffered must be what you were experiencing now in that small body of yours. Bakugo, we lost him. I'm heading back to my agency for a debrief. Hope you're doing okay, informed Kirishima through his earpiece. Sadly, he heard no reply, but he hoped that he would receive word from Bakugo's agency soon about the situation at hand. It wasn't long until sidekicks arrived from Fat Gum's agency to keep tabs on the escapee, while Kirishima returned to the agency's headquarters with you in his arms. Hiding you out of sight was difficult, especially after being greeted by Fat Gum and soon questioned during the debrief. He could feel your hiccups and your whines, still feeling the effects of your stint with Seek coursing through your body, and would attempt to hold on to you close to his chest in hopes that his warmth would keep you calm. Say, how about a reward for what you've done today? Suggested Fat Gum, offering a lollipop towards the bundle in Kirishima's arms. You turned to the sweet in Fat Gum's hand, eyes red and stinging from the crying that refused to stop. A moment passed before you nodded, taking the lollipop and laid against Kirishima's shoulder, now silent. <sighs> Thanks, Fat Gum. Spoke Kirishima, relieved that you had at least calmed. There ain't nothing to it, replied Fat Gum. Still, this is a frightening turn of events. This Sikh character sounds a lot like someone we know. Yeah, but could Eri do something like this? It's been said she accidentally did so to her father. At least that's what's been recorded, but luckily this should only last till the morning. You should head home. I'll speak with Fourth Kind about this. Kirishima turned to Fat Gum, relieved that all measures were taken to keep everyone well informed. After some time, he had not heard much from Bakugo's agency, or from the local hero network, learning that Bakugo had not returned to their headquarters after the chase. He figured that his friend was also going through the same thing. The medics at the agency treated you for any injuries. However, they advised Kirishima due to your state of being that you needed to be treated with care. The extent of any injury caused to you before this transformation may be an extremely delicate situation. After finding some decent clothes to put you into while in the locker rooms of the agency, Garnering some assistance from sidekicks, 
Kirishima proceeded to take you to his, carrying you in his arms while you enjoyed your lollipop. The few stares he received from passers-by were odd. Trying to avoid making direct eye contact until he made it through his front door. He sighed with relief. Despite the number of missions he would ever involve himself in, this was already nerve-wracking. Thank you, piped a voice from his arms, staring down at you smiling back up at him, now with an empty lollipop stick in your hands. <laughs> Don't mention it, he spoke gently. Thank fat gum, really. Kirishima proceeded to lower you to the floor, allowing you to walk while he tossed his belongings onto his couch before flopping onto it. He stared up at the ceiling, wondering about the turn of events back on Nabu Island and remembering the shadows and figures that he encountered there. If only he interrogated further, he thought to himself. Despite thinking these thoughts, it may not have changed what had been done. There was already too much happening in the city. A tug on his shirt caught his attention from his thoughts, glancing at your small body beside him. I'm hungry, you piped. Kirishima froze, stuttering under his breath on what to do. Aside from his portion meals and protein intake, Kirishima admitted that he was not the best cook. Even Bakugo had tried to teach him a few things, with very little success, or even patience. Um, uh, what are you up for? Asked Kirishima, pulling himself up from the couch, now sitting. I'm just hungry. You simply answered, your hands laying on his thigh while you stared up at him obliviously. Kirishima thought for a while on what he could do to alleviate the situation. Despite his lackluster cooking skills, he wanted to be sure that you weren't still in pain. He didn't look like it on the outside, watching you still eye him curiously, but... Are you feeling okay? He asked. Does it hurt still? He heard no reply until you lightly shook your head. I'm a little better. <sighs> I'm glad. He smiled down at you, yet still pondered on what to do. Last he remembered his fridge, there wasn't anything decent to eat, let alone cook something even if he tried. He considered ordering food in, but that would take time, which would also entail keeping you occupied until food arrived. Yet with his worries about the past, about your condition, and wondering how long he had to look after you, his mind began to overload. <coughs> A smack in his face woke him from his racing thoughts finding one of the cushions from the couch now in his lap after being slapped by it. He shook his head from the sudden shock, turning to find you with another cushion in your small hands. Wake up! You yelled, throwing the cushion in his face. Hey! He yelled back, grabbing hold of the cushion. What was that for? You, you spaced out! You yelled. It kind of scared me. Kirishima was taken aback by the comment, watching you huddle into yourself, eyes now staring at the floor. He watched you hold onto your arms, rubbing against them to comfort yourself, and noticing the slight twinge in your fingers. He could only deduce that it was the side effects of your quirk, and that your joints needed the aftercare you normally would have used after today's encounter. Um, I'm sorry I scared you. I'm just a little worried. He admitted. I don't know what to do. He looked away, slightly ashamed at his lack of understanding and knowledge on the situation, until he felt your hands on his knees, catching his eye before you raised your arms towards him, signaling for him to lift you from the floor. Without a second thought, Kirishima did just that, his hands gently carrying you up onto his lap before you hugged into his chest. 
he felt her small hands grip onto his shirt, never wanting to let go by the way they clutched onto his fabric. He smiled, resting his hand upon your head, allowing you to embrace his warmth, spotting a beaming smile on your face. <laughs> Kirishima felt the same way. Dinner needed to be sorted somehow. He eyed the couch with the now-tossed cushions haphazardly around him before he reached out for his phone, searching for a takeaway store nearby. How do you feel about teppanyaki? He asked. I could grab some of our favorites. Okay. And while we wait, Want to build a blanket for it? We can eat inside if it looks good. He watched your eyes light up with excitement, giggling under your breath before the two of you set off onto building a large tent in the middle of his apartment. After speaking with medics, Kirishima discovered that keeping you mobile was the best medicine. In this case, Seeing that constant, if not consistent, motion in your limbs and joints could help ease the tension and strain that you exerted back on mission. He watched you fumble around a bit, carrying more than you should in order to construct foundations and pitch up overhanging rooftops. To his surprise, you began to calm and relax more, enjoying the time spent with him before dinner arrived at the door. It felt like a long night, but Kirishima watched how vibrant you became after being distracted for a while. Dinner was filled with stories and laughter, mostly from you, causing Kirishima to crack a smirk learning more about your life than you would have wanted. He never would have guessed how much of a talker you were. Kirishima had only put away any leftovers and dirty dishes in his kitchen before returning back to your sleepy form, smiling at your peaceful face. The heavy lifting, the construction, and the big dinner all but zapped your energy, laying on a soft pile of pillows and blankets that you had deemed, ironically, your cloud burrow. Kirishima quietly and carefully crawled into the ford, pulling up a blanket over you before he gave a small chaste kiss on your forehead. Good night, Thumper. He softly whispered, watching you twitch your nose before he crawled himself out from the fort. He stretched his limbs to ease himself from the long day before he made his way to his bedroom, tucking himself for the night. He hoped Fat Gum was right about the effects of this quirk. <sighs> Aside from a deep sleep, Kirishima felt well rested. It didn't come to mind that he had not heard anything from you at all during the night while he slowly made his way out of bed, still drowsy from sleep. The bathroom wasn't too far away. The first thought he had was to clean himself up until he realized that he still hadn't heard a word from you. He eyed the blanket fort that draped across the large lounge room, turning to have a look inside, only to find nothing. Thumper? He mumbled. His eyes, though dreary, darted around inside of the fort. Not one small body to be found. Thumper? He called again his heart racing, his eyes scanning around the room and listening carefully to any sounds. Did the quirk not revert? Did it continue to transpire on your body? The sinking feeling of you disappearing dropped in his stomach like a weight he could never carry. He felt- Yeah? <laughs> in a heap due to the panic that coursed throughout the home. Both Kirishima and yourself fell onto the blanket fort, destroying the canopies and leaving a heap of blankets tossed and turned everywhere. 
Kirishima felt a little relieved that the decision to make it as fluffy as possible helped ease the fall. It was a bold choice made by you. With a grunt and a grumble, Kirishima found you laying atop him. Now wearing one of his merchandise shirts he had hanging around his apartment. <laughs> Sorry I scared you. <laughs> you piped with a nervous chuckle. You were immediately accosted by Kirishima's arms, holding onto you tightly, feeling his morning breath against your skin. Ugh. Oh, thank God. He breathed. I thought I lost you. Kirishima refused to let go, wanting nothing more than to feel you with him. He felt your hands wrap around him, nuzzling your head into his chest. Almost like you did yesterday. Thank you for looking after me. You spoke. Eyes closed while you felt the beat of his heart against your ear. Kirishima couldn't help but smile, returning his hug tenfold, unable to contain the relief and the joy of seeing you again. Laying amongst the heap of blankets, linen and pillows, the both of you stilled, enjoying this quiet moment together. Ichiro can't breathe. Uh. Thank you for tuning in to another fanfiction reading. If you enjoy what I do or would just prefer to fall asleep to my voice, please hit that like button, ring that bell, and subscribe to my channel. I have so many more ideas for this kind of universe and for this situation, and it may be slow on the uptake, but I do hope to get to the rest of the heroes as soon as possible. <laughs> Thank you for visiting. I hope to hear from you soon. Next we meet.